Hey everybody, it's Diaz Caraval from ZK Research here. And I'm Bob La Liberté from the Cube Research. And so welcome to the Zcast. And Analyst Angle. Yeah, so we're both here at uh, Cisco Live 2025 in San Diego. Uh, Bob, we're back at the show. Another year, yeah. another Cisco Live. And uh, I think we're going to call this the G2 and Liz show, right? We had a lot of primary news from those two groups. Yeah, given a lot of news. And I think one of the, the big takeaways was just the payload at this event, right? So we, we actually counted them. Yeah. 24 separate technology innovations that were launched this week. 24. 24. Yeah, that's a lot. And it's, it's interesting because at last year's show, G2 uh, hadn't become chief product officer yet. He's been in the role right. 10 and a half months. But he did say that in a year's time, Cisco would be unrecognizable uh, in a positive way from the way the company's operated in the past. And he's lived up to that. He has. He's, he's been, you know, starting, we saw it late fall and certainly through the first six months. You know, that's, that was 24 just this week when they were able to bring up over yeah. the last 10 months. What we've really seen is them just dramatically increasing the pace of innovation yeah. that they're able to operate at. Um, and it's been, I think, a combination of things. We heard today talking about the fact that they've been able to break down the barriers between the business units, bring teams together, and also leverage AI themselves to accelerate their innovation cycles. Yeah, and so a lot of the innovation obviously has been in the area of security. Yep. There's some networking news, but I think the common thread is that AI has almost created a unifying rallying cry for Cisco to build their stack around. And right. they've used AI to build products, but they also build products for AI. So we always yeah. talk about networking for AI and AI for networking, but this is really Cisco for AI and AI for Cisco, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. 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 Leveraging, leveraging the AI tools to help them develop faster, but then using that to create AI tools to help their customers yeah. develop a lot faster. So to me, one of the big takeaways was probably the uh, Agentic uh, ops story yes. that they came out with. So, and we've been waiting for that, honestly. We, we so, have, but yeah. you've heard, you know, there's been a lot of hype around AI ops, there's a lot of hype around uh, Gentic AI, but now they're trying to tie that together and, and look at that as the next evolution of what organizations need. They've built out their own LLM, specifically on the content and the knowledge that they've developed over the last 40 years, yeah. uh, and claiming it's, you know, much more precise around solving these network problems than obviously any other models that are available. Yeah, I thought one of the more meaningful product announcements was just the revamp in security. Uh, yeah. New firewalls, hybrid mesh firewall, uh, they came out with the XDR, um, uh, you know, they had um, uh, a HyperShield, uh, the defense, HyperShield, you know, and, AI and, defense. Yeah, AI defense, yeah. and so they've really ramped up security. And one of the things I think that's unique to them is they were able to tie it to the network. Now, they're using more network telemetry to drive security information. Yeah, And absolutely. this is something, Bob, that, um, you know, if you look back the last decade or so, things I've written about Cisco, I've called out the most important thing for Cisco is moving the needle on security. It's the only market that they don't have like this, you know, dominant share in. It's highly fragmented, and being able to move the needle a little bit would actually move the stock price a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the other interesting takeaway from this week was I we've heard it over and over again how they fused network yes. and security together because I think their best path to driving secure, that security solution that you just talked about, is through the network as well. So, so many yeah. of these are tied so tightly to the network infrastructure, right, and the network solutions, that you're gonna start seeing a lot more of that in tightly integrated networking and security, yeah, right? And, yeah, I know one of the other products, I wanna get your thoughts on it, was AI Canvas, and that was, yeah. the demos they gave were, were crazy. I mean, the, the ability to uh, almost uh, uh, dynamically create a dashboard, right? And Correct. what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's certainly impressive, and it's a combination of AI tools, right? So obviously, it's got agentic AI because it's going out and pulling information from Splunk, from Meraki, from Catalyst, right? From Thousand Eyes to be able to pull things up. It's got generative AI that's actually creating those dashboards and those widgets as it goes and allowing you to pin them if you want to have them. Uh, and then also having a little bit of that operational side where it's providing the recommendations for how to fix it and enabling you to actually fix them. Yes. Uh, but a key component, as they brought up over and over again in that piece, was the human in the loop. That the human is always part of that loop and part of that process with AI Canvas. Yeah, you use this um, term all the time, uh, time to comfort, I think it is. Correct. Yeah. and. Uh, uh, in your sense, how long do you think customers get comfortable with it? I actually think it's going to be pretty quick. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think once they start using it, once they get it in their hands and they're able to have a problem, work through it using AI Canvas, I think they're going to accelerate that time to comfort 
having all those tools and again knowing that they're in control yeah. as well. Yeah, and uh, uh, any other products you want to call out? I thought the smart switch was pretty interesting too, the revamping there. So Yeah, the yeah. smart switches were, like that, I said, they were... And that's the one, if you don't know, it's yeah. got a DPU built into it. Correct. And so now you can run a lot of security workloads on switch. Without disrupting the switch yes. performance yeah. and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Seeing the, the smart switches, I'm trying to, like I said, with 24 separate announcements, it's, yeah. it's and we're not going to go through each one yeah, of them. Yeah, trust us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember all of them. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there were a lot of, like I said, the, the, like, I, the bigger package to me wasn't in any of the individual ones per se, but in just the sheer volume that they've been able to do. And if they can keep up this pace of innovation, I think one of the other big takeaways for me was that, and it was mentioned multiple times, was the fact that there's been a cultural change. Yes. As, as regarding yeah. the development and that the teams are excited to be working together and collaborating well, that's a G2 and effect. driving, right? Yeah. yeah and, and having that. So I think that to me is, is uh, one of the more impressive results from the last year. Yeah. And while we had a lot of product from G2's team, uh, we had some news today around uh, the services side, CX with Liz Correct. Santoni. And what I like about this is Liz actually has a product background yes. and historically, you know, product and services at Cisco are a little... They're not the best of friends sometimes, but I, 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 I do get the sense that because Liz Santoni has a product background, there's better synergies between, she understands that the role of services is really to enable product sales, uh, right, and, um, and, and the, so those groups have to work very closely together. And to deliver great experience, yes. right? It's, it's really, she's looking at like, how can I leverage AI to ensure all of our customers have the best possible experience from you know eliminating all the configuration eliminating all the time they have to spend doing those routine tasks and so forth and being able to deliver a much more seamless much more simplified experience when using Cisco products yeah and let me um, uh, let's finish on this Bob the, yeah. the uh, well the innovation is great and the product innovation is great I've talked to some of the partners and customers around here it's a lot of stuff yeah and you know a lot of customers are still trying to get the blocking and tackling done, they're doing Wi-Fi upgrades, they're doing campus upgrades. The ability to ingest that much technology and get it deployed is can almost be overwhelming. And so, how, how does this play out? You, you, I, you know, what, what's your sense here? Yeah, the interesting, it's, it's a great question because, like I said, so many people are just worried about the basic blocking and tackling, getting yeah. their Wi-Fi network set up, making sure it's working and all that. Some of the technology that was announced today won't be out for another couple of months and so forth, right? So there's going to be some time for organizations to be able to digest it. But yeah, there is going to be there is going to be a transition period where organizations have to look at, evaluate, and get it in. The, the only thing I would say is that the technology is just changing so quickly. Yeah. The pace of innovation, the using it. I think we heard a couple of weeks ago from the, the head of Microsoft AI there's not going to be any fast followers. Right. They, you're either going to be using it or, not. or you're, going to, you're yeah. going to be left behind. So I'm expecting, and, and some of the customers that I spoke to, uh, actually I was, I was surprised. They were very much pro AI, pro, pro AI Canvas, looking to get their hands on it, talking about how they don't want to be using CLIs anymore, which was interesting, right, from a traditional yeah. Cisco base. So I like I, CLI. <laughs> yeah. It's know, a little it, outdated, it's, though, yeah. It's worked, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's what's kept the network up and running. but. I think we're going to see organizations start to embrace this technology, and I think it's going to be the, the thing, best thing that I'm looking for, the biggest thing I'm looking for coming out of this and, and the follow-on is actually seeing the value derived as these technologies get deployed into the customer environment. Yeah, and actually, I um, just prior to this, I talked to Jorge Ramirez for General Motors and asked him his thoughts on AI, and he said they're using it to automate the mundane. And to me, that's a great way to get started, yes. right? It's like, if you use it to do the stuff people don't like to do, no one's going to get upset. Correct. <laughs> right? And then maybe look to use it once you get a little comfortable with it. But I will say, the statement that you hear Jensen and Chuck and G2 say all the time, it's not AI that's going to take your job, it's someone that uses it. That is a true statement. And so yeah. And, and yeah. the other thing I would say is, if you think about the research that we did last year, yeah. when we asked them what the benefits were, most everyone was coming back saying, oh, it's faster time to find, faster time to fix, but the organizations who had been using it longer said, no, my biggest benefit is my ability to have time to work on more strategic stuff, right? So to really drive the business and not just handing those routine mundane tasks. Yeah. All right, Bob, so we're running up against the clock here. Anything else you want to yeah. add? 
Uh, no, other than uh, you know, looking forward to, to seeing what ha what comes out next year. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, we got a lot of other events between then and now too. So, but uh, uh, knowing G two, I don't think the pace of innovation is going to slow down anytime soon. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm half a bottle of Liberty from the Cube Research and the Analyst Angle. I'm Zia Caraval from ZK Research and Thane. Thanks for watching this joint Zcast Analyst Angle. Uh, give us a like and hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Our next episode of Zcast and and Analyst Angle. Yeah.